Good evening, viewers. This is Afrovision. My name is Hiwat Malaku. Afrovision promotes the social, political, and economical aspects of Africa. Afrovision introduces especially African professionals, African products, culture, arts, music, and historical and geographical touches. I find the connection between Afrikaans and Dutch then uh, uh, because there was this thorough boycott in the past. There was no connection between Holland and and South Africa, and because of the boycott, we I had no I have never I grew up I I could read Dutch books but I've never heard it spoken until I was I think 28 when I came here. Then the first time I heard someone speaking it uh, really. But that, that has now changed. There's constant visits of Dutch writers to South Africa, and a lot of us are coming here. So it's a, a and what what is such a good example of of Holland is this tradition of translation. That people just assume that you have translation. I mean, here tonight we've read um, poems. No way people would have thought that. People would just say these two are so close to one another, we're not going to translate it because the people will understand the Afrikaans. Die mond heeft de borst even losgelaten. Hoor je mij? Ik, die enkel blank ben, die bliksemblank en onlosmakelijk alleen zichzelf is, wil dat jij je het continent toe-eigent. Hou in je handen het stugge, mompelende hart. Wieg het zodat Afrika wordt uitgeklapt, opengeklapt en met volle zeilen de aarde bevaart. Dat het van jou, van mij, van ons wordt. Gedaante. Geen woord verandert de lepel, verandert de zetel, de trommel van gedaante. Ze zijn al mens, als mens al woord, al gedicht sinds toen in hun werkplaats in Afrika. Today we have an African poetry presentation for you from Tropical Museum in Amsterdam. In the presentation we made a short interview with a South African poet Antje Kroeg. I hope you enjoy the show.
Gracias, Romulo. Een initiatiebeeldje voor meisjes, een Angolees beeldje. Overal. Je lijkt gehouden uit de angsten van alle meisjes in Angola, Amazonia en Nederland. Je kind gezicht nog rond, inwijdingstekens al op je wangen. Ogen, ijzeren cirkels van verbijstering, met kopspijkers vastgepind. Je hoofd eens terug, je haar vlamt in plukken, oker in de lucht. Je handen verberg je in het roodbruine hout van je smalle bekken. Je kleine borsten ademen in. Zo houd ik van je, zo. Als ik even jong van mij niet houden kon. Als je uitademen zou, ging de paniek uit je ogen, de houterigheid uit je lijf en kamde je met alle meiden klitten uit jullie haar. Trok wiebelige scheidingen, vlocht geheimtaal rond elkaars hoofd. Je korte benen thuis in kluiten roodbruine aarde. Zetel. Tussen het zitvlak voor de machtige en de cirkel van de aarde is in hetzelfde hout een vrouw gesneden, die op de toppen van haar vingers een sterfelijke koning dragen kan. Ze weet hoe de zetel onherroepbaar van moeder op dochter werd bewaard en zelden door wie dan ook bezeten. Leopold, Amin, Mobutu heeft ze zien verdwijnen en Mandela vrij zien komen. Rond haar fluistert huiverend de aarde. Als ze stampvoet en uit wil breken, voelt ze hoe hout veel langer houdt dan huid. Dat is een grote, een spleetrommel. En de echte tamtam die boodschappen overbrengt in twee tonen. Dus beide kanten zijn anders gesneden, zodat dat net twee andere tonen oplevert. Al een eeuw oud en het tambre schijnt nog even mooi te zijn als lang geleden. Spleettrommel. Stel je voor een trommel uit een meterslange boom, neergelegd en hol gehouden met een spleet waaruit meeslepend geluid ontsnappen kan. Stel je voor, ik trommel je op. En jij hoort het als vroeger, mijn geheime lokroep aan het tuinhek. Je zwaait het zolderraam weer open. Ik sla onze taal, wat er van bleef, in ritmes van twee tonen. Die elkaar doorlopend kruisen. Stel je voor, je verstaat het, beter dan de schoolbel of de torenklok. Zou je dan komen op het feest? Zou je de trommel en beest graag zien? De lange hals en de staart uit de lengte van de stam? De antilopenkop met oren luisterend in de nek? De poten dansend rondgebogen? Samen met de romp die zich buik sprekend om mijn berichten spant? Zou ik je zo bereiken, ver in de dood? De buik dieper voor ons pratend dan wij vroeger naast elkaar. Die windgesuiverde lucht, soos klosse vuur, spat thematisch in die bedding. Die maan meldt haar aan en melk. 
sterren neurie in die doornboom langs die voetpad op pad naar jou toe. Jij moet dit zien. Jij moet hoor hoe die wind die zon oor jou drumpel dra. Proe hoe water in die ondergaande zon stil die voorplaten wordt. Kijk je die grond gloei van je. De lucht is vervuld van de wind met mijn stem op weg naar jou. Jij die onwrikbaar gestippeld ligt, ergens in doeken en kruiden, in liedjes en in pijn. Je ruggengraatje gekromd, tegen wat komt. Hou vol, lieve kind, tegen de verdrukking in. Dat je de aarde kunt zien, samengekleefd met zonnen en manen en kometen en meteorieten. De wind gezuiverde lucht, als ballen vuur spat de tomaten in de bedding. De maan meldt zich aan in melk. Sterren neurie in de toornboom langs het voetpad op weg naar jou. Ik zal het jou uit miljoenen vluchtelingen, uit honger en dorst, uit die damp van kreten en die stank van gedoe verdriet, die desperate ratbraak van dromen. Van achter zal ik jou dapper niks tingel herken en jou in hart loop, jou met die arm uitlig, want je moet dit anders zien. Afrikanen, ons kinders van die afgrond, ons moet allemaal anders zien. Die vaste land wat ze een groot zwart hart op die aardbol drijft. Vaste land wat ons is. Vaste land kloppend van bloed in die groot hartkamers van woestijn en oerwoud, savanna en klip. Verloren vasteland waarop zoveel so verloren figuren, verloren daden van gewaande vertrouwen pleeg. Groot agressieve hart, waarop duizenden dagelijks geruisloos sterft. In een Ik zal je komen halen uit de binden en kogels en geweld en eets. Uit stomheid, uit domheid, uit de corrupte gezichten van mannen. Oprapen zal ik je, uit miljoenen vluchtelingen. Uit honger en dorst, uit de damp van kreten en de stank van gedoogd verdriet. Het desperate ratbraken van dromen. Van achteren? Zal ik je moedig nek herkennen en me haast om je in te halen en je met mijn arm uit te plukken. Want je moet het anders zien, Afrikanen. Kinderen van de afgrond, we moeten het allemaal anders zien. Het vaste land dat als één groot zwart hart op de aardbol drijft. Vaste land dat wij zijn. Vaste land waarin het bloed klopt in de grote hartkamers van woestijn en oerwoud en savanna en rots. Verloren vaste land. Waarop zoveel verloren figuren daden van vermeend vertrouwen plegen. Groot, agressief hart, waarop duizenden dagelijks geruisloos sterven, bij bosjes verwoorden tot bezems van beenderen. Ik wil dat jij het bent, mijn kleintje. Dat je tussen de ribben de trilling voelt dat het anders moet. Dat we moeten waarmaken dat wij wij zijn, dat wat in ons als Afrikanen zit, iets zo medemenselijk is. Zo grondwettig, grondig groot is, dat het het vreemde verstand te boven gaat. We zijn wat we zijn, omdat we elkaar toebehoren. Waarom doen we het dan telkens verkeerd? Ik vlei mijn wang tegen de jouwe en wil je inverluisteren. Wees niet onverschillig. Wees niet onverschillig. Would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Uh, I'm Anki Kroeg. I'm a poet from South Africa. I write in one of the 11 official languages of South Africa, Afrikaans. And I'm currently in Holland um, for a variety of things, among them to talk about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And also because I've translated a Dutch book into Afrikaans. Afrikaans and Dutch is quite close to one another because the Dutch came to South Africa in 1652 and together with the language of slaves that had been imported from um, the East, a language developed which now is Afrikaans. So the basic structure is Dutch but there's a lot of words that is Malayan uh, in its origin. So which language do you speak? 
I then speak Afrikaans, which is the one that is close to to Dutch. Are you born in South Africa? I was born there, and uh, from my father's side, uh, during the uh, 1800s, uh, my forefather came out from Norway, I think, Kroch. And from my mother's side, they came uh, from Holland uh, in 1600. Okay, since uh, when do you uh, start writing poems? I started when I was very young. I wrote it, I wrote during high school, and I published my first volume when I was 17 years old. And since then, I've published eight volumes and yeah, it's, it's, I cannot imagine a life without writing, yeah. Where did you write, uh, where did you learn to write it? Is it in school or your parents uh, used to write poems? My mother is a writer and there is this belief on the African continent, uh, it's not only a belief, it's a practice, that writing runs in families. You get class or caste systems, which is the griots or the people who write. And that is, that is an indication that genetically writing functions in families. So I have several uncles that write. My mother writes, I write, and I have a daughter who has now uh, published her first short story. So it is, I grew up in a house where people read poetry, like poetry, performed poetry, so it has it has been a, a way of life. So you mean you had it in your genes uh, to write a poem, or you learn it from your family? I think both, uh, because we five children, I'm the only one who, who who writes poetry. But it is also an awareness of sound and rhythm, and. Uh, I mean, my, my whole mental makeup has to do with sound. It, it, to me, it matters how things sound, much more than what it is saying. And I can detect lies just by the way it sounds, not by, way, by what it is saying, just by the sound of it. And I hate people who pronounce words as if there's not a difference between a T and a D and a and a V, and a F. So it has to do with language too? It has to do with sound and it has to do with language and then it also has to do with what you want to say or that you have something to say. And South Africa is in that sense a very rich country. There's always been horrible and terrible and wonderful things to say uh, there. So one was never without material, but at the same time realizing that there are certain things that, that belongs to others, that there are certain things that, that other people must say. So is it sometimes do you want to um, give a message to people through your poem, or is it just a, a thing you do for your own self? I think it is both. It, I, I cannot write something without part of me being in that. But then, on the other hand, um, w one is so involved in what is happening uh, in the country that you, that, that, that your dreams and your expectations is always part of that. But for example, I would never try to pretend that I am black. I think when in, in our country at least needs a sensitivity to say, I, I'm not and I cannot I cannot begin to pretend that I am, but now that is not to say that I that I 
that I don't care about the continent or that I don't care about living there or that I don't want to live there. Um, and I think that the more South Africa's problems are being sorted out, the more you can see people cross over um, with more confidence to say, okay, maybe now South Africans can start talking for one another or with one another or at one another. What's your dream for South Africa? Oh, it's just for 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 peace and and justice and the and a kind of context where people can live decent uh, human lives where people can be kind and where where there's some sense of of justice and fairness and that we can get rid of poverty and you know the the things that haunts the continent if um and our president uh, Tabo Mbeki i mean his constant phrase is we have to succeed and one can see that it is a, a passion in south africa that a black government should succeed in and running a country effectively and allowing every single person in that country to be able to lead a decent life. Uh, when you write your poems, um, uh, do you, what, what about is it most often? I have several themes. One of the themes is um, b being white uh, be, and, and, and questioning whiteness. The other one is being female and how uh, how it's cordoned off, how it's trapped in certain things. The other one is being part of a family, being a mother, um, having children. Um, other one is having a relationship with, with a man um, and getting older. So I... You know, I had. Well, I'm still married to the same person, so I wrote wonderful love poems to him when I was young, and now we're old. And and he says, "Yes, you write now horrible love poems about old people." But I mean, it is the 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 growing of a relationship between two people. Uh, let me take you back to the whiteness. What do you mean by being whiteness? Is there a question about that? No, the thing is that in in the past one could one could easily have lived in South Africa without being accountable for being white. To say what is it? What did you bring? What is the expectations? What is the distortions? Uh, what is the, the you know the 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 maimedness that you bring with whiteness and how do you live a, a white life among such poverty, among such injustice, among uh, apartheid, among a whole system, a criminal system that is oppressing the majority of the country? How do you, de how do you deal with that? What is it? How, can you, how dare you write a poem about a child, your child, while other children are dying? So it's... it's I. I've always felt that it's crucial that one should question these things in, instead of just assuming this is how it should be. How often do you write poems? Is it like every day or uh, uh, when do you write them? Oh, the older I get, the more difficult it gets. You know, it's like uh, old, old people's love making. You know, it's sort of it takes a lot of time. Uh, I have to be very protective, I have to... Um, but poetry is different from writing prose where you can have a, a, a pattern every day you sit between 9 and 12. It's poetry, it, it arrives and you have to have free time. So, and most of my life I have been working. So, you know, the arrival must be sort of in between when there's space and that always is difficult. Are there enough interested people, uh, European, I mean, uh, about African poetry here? 
I find the connection between Afrikaans and Dutch then uh, uh, because there was this thorough boycott in the past. There was no connection between Holland and and South Africa. And because of the boycott, we I had no I have never I grew up I, I could read Dutch books but I've never heard it spoken until I was I think 28 when I came here then the first time I heard someone speaking it uh, really. But that, that has now changed. There's constant visits of Dutch writers to South Africa and a lot of us are coming here. So it's a, a and what, what is such a good example of, of Holland is this tradition of translation. That people just assume that you have translation. I mean, here tonight we've read um, poems. Nowhere people would have thought that people would just say these two are so close to one another we're not going to translate it because the people will understand the Afrikaans. And it's not. You know, it just you just have that extra access and that's the most valuable lesson I always learn when I'm here is that nothing is too problematic or too much of trouble for the Dutch to get translation. And via that you understand people you get access to people and you also allow people to sound as intelligent as they are you know we're not i don't arrive here as a second rate citizen because i speak this simple language yeah. that comes from africa uh, one last question how do you define poetry in your own words okay let me just say i cannot write prose because the the mere fact that something has to start with a capital, it has to have a verb, an object and a subject, and it has to have a full stop at the end. I cannot express myself in that. It just, it feels like I'm trapped in something. It's the space and the silence around poetry that... How do you know when a poem is good or bad? You, you, you know. You know, you know, you know, because you love poetry. And when you read other works, you know, oh, oh, this is nice. And then you write, and then after three or four days, you go back to it. And you say, this works, this works very, oh, this is terrible. Oh, no, this I must You know, you know. Uh, aren't you? Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Slaap liggies voor een domizana atu. Stel maar zoet. Slaap zag, slaap heel in zwart gekanken. Kinderkie mijne, kinderkie nat geboren nou. Buiten draai die aarde a en o, zo zag om bloes met blauw. Laat die wind jou hart klop vat, laat die water jou oor vat, jou oore laat die reen jou vat. Binnen kraak jou tongetje van skreeuw, jou buisies, vuisies, bal verset. Jy le in een baaikie verlaas geheilig dier jouself. Toe maar, toe maar, kinderkie swart, kinderkie veld, kinderkie niemand vir niks vermeld. Kinderkie boors, kinderkie toors. Stel maar, soet, slaap sag, slaap heel en swart gekant. Stel maar, soet, slaap zacht, slaap gaaf en zwart op je zij. Kindje van me, kindje, nat geboren, nu net. Buiten draait de aarde, a ah, en oe, zo zacht omzoomd met blauw. Laat de wind je hartenklop pakken, laat het water je ogen pakken, je oren, laat de regen je pakken. Binnen kraakt je tongetje van het krijsen, je balt je vuistjes in verzet, je ligt in een kleine baai, ten slotte geheiligd door jezelf. Toe maar, toe maar. Kindje zwart, kindje veld, kindje niemand, voor niets gemeld. Kindje borst, 
kindje dorst. Sst, sst, stil maar. Zoet, slaap zacht, slaap gaaf en zwart op je zij.